Hello, my Cocoa Puffs. It's Cocoa Pru here in a bathroom in Pomona. <laughs> and um, I just I just felt as though I needed to share something with you. I um, grew up in New York City, of course, and I was obsessed with the musical Fiddler on the Roof from when I was very young. And in fact, I think I was about two years old when my parents took me to see it. And they were so impressed with me because I sat there just riveted. I didn't squirm. I, I didn't talk. I just was riveted with what I was seeing on stage. So much so that I then wore a yarmulke around the house. Um, and I'm not Jewish, but I just was, that's how obsessed I was with this musical. Anyway, all these years later, here I am, you know, an older queen. And I realized that I've never seen the musical since then. It came to LA. I told my husband, listen. I'm not even going to try to get the cheap tickets. I'm not going to do the gold star. I'm not going to try and see who I know that can, you know, get me. Just purchase the tickets. I, I want to support the theater. So that's what we did. We bought tickets. I was very excited. And let me just say, I love the show. The dancing, I just, to hear that music again live, it was fabulous. Here's the thing. Mm. The show started. Of course, the opening number, tradition. Perhaps one of the greatest opening numbers of any Broadway show. I mean, it just is, it's so clear. I, I just love it, and it's great, you know. Da, 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 da. And, you know, I was, I was so emotional. And then all of a sudden, you know, the lights go to black when the song's over, and the, the scene starts, the lights come out. Well, that's when they let the late come in. And I'm not talking three or four or five people. I'm talking hordes. Hordes of people. Late to the theater. Now see, I told my husband, we're leaving at, at 6 p.m. He says, the show's not to eight. I said, better late, uh, better early than late. And we'll have a cup of coffee, use the bathroom, read the playbill, that's what we did. Why can't other people do that? You know, I understand you have a little traffic and if you work, whatever. That's three or four people, not hordes, okay? Number two, sitting behind me, there was a woman who um, I guess didn't have time to eat before the show. So she brought food wrapped in tin foil, and a Tupperware. No. No, you're in the theater. You don't, you don't eat, you don't bring food into a theater. But see, maybe she thought that was okay because um, the Pantages Theater, and I'm having a little problem with, not the theater, the theater's gorgeous, but who's ever running it? They have a concession stand there and they're selling uh, bags of, Popcorn wrapped in you know, little cellophane bags, bags of pretzels. Oh yeah, sippy cups, sippy cups. So you know it's not bad enough that people have to get up to pee during the show. Now now they're encouraged to drink more and have to get up and down to go pee during the show. Then uh, of course, who doesn't love listening to a box being shaken? You know, as the um, peanut M and M's come flying out of it, and then the crunching. You know, during Sunrise, sunset. You know, that, that's, that's fabulous. And then, and then the, the crinkling to get into the pretzels. You know, the crunching of the popcorn. No. What, what, what is this? We, it, it, I'm, I'm sorry. I know it's about the money. But this is theater. You go to theater to get away from all of that. To be elevated. To have this moment, this communal moment. Where what people are doing on stage is, is somehow coming out to you when you're receiving it. How can you be receiving it when you, and, and how can I be receiving it fully at the full price I pay for that fucking ticket when you're sitting there shaking a box of M&Ms? No, and not to mention the two people in front of me who talked through the whole show. Uh, one of them thought it'd be cute to sing along. I didn't pay to listen to you sing the songs. And then his phone rang, rang, and, and he took the call, got up, walked out, took the call. And it wasn't an emergency because then his girlfriend then took that time to explain to their friends who had called and everything was fine. So he missed the last quarter of the show. All right, and, and here's the other thing. When the show is over and, and the cast comes out, you know, to accept the applause and the standing ovation they so deserved, large chunks of the audience were already walking out. No, I'm sorry, that's just wrong. These people have busted their ass. Not, not just that evening, but with all the training and the dancing and the years of classes to give you this moment 
and you can't even sit there, I'm not even asking you to give them a standing ovation if you're too fucking lazy for that. But at least sit there and applaud these people. I, I, I thought my head was going to explode. So I just wonder, why aren't we elevating ourselves when we go to the theater? And why is that theater even encouraging us to sort of act like we're sitting at home watching some fucking bad reality show? And my husband says to me, why don't we go out more often? And I turned to him after that show. I said, honey, this is why we don't go out more often. Because I feel assaulted. Mm -hmm. And you see, that bothers me. And sometimes I wonder, is there even enough tension to him tea? Please, people. It's the theater. Respect it.